Okay, so um, we're talking about quadratic functions um, and graphing them and identifying certain pieces of those graphs. So we're going to start with a quadratic function or equation. And this book calls it standard form, but really it should be called vertex form, and that's what it used to be called. I don't know why this book is calling it standard form. We're going to start with vertex form. Our book calls it standard form, but it's vertex form because technically it gives you the vertex of a parabola right away. So this is what the form looks like. Okay, this is an A. Now, <clears throat> we know that quadratic functions, they're graphs. They either open up or they either open down, right? The parabolas that open up and smile or open down and frown. The low point of these graphs that open up, this is called the vertex, right? Because it is a low point on the graph, it is also the minimum of the graph. Therefore, this would be a vertex or a maximum. Oh, that's running off my page here. Or a maximum. Right, the high point would be considered a maximum. Um, now, <clears throat> there's a line that goes through the vertex, a vertical line that goes through the vertex that separates the parabola into two equal pieces. And we call that line the axis of symmetry. I'm just going to write AOS for short. Axis of symmetry is that vertical line that goes through the vertex that separates your parabola into two equal pieces. So if I fold this half, over this axis of symmetry, it will fall right on the other side. Now, I know if a parabola opens up or opens down based on this leading coefficient here, this a. If a is less than zero, let me start with a greater than zero. If a is greater than zero, meaning positive, then it opens up, it's facing up. If a is less than zero, then the parabola opens down, it's facing down. The vertex either a max or a min, is represented by hk, where h is the x-coordinate and k is the y-coordinate. And the axis of symmetry is always a vertical line, and every vertical line has an equation x equal to a number. And because that vertical line goes through the vertex, the axis of symmetry equation is always x is equal to h, the x-coordinate of the vertex. So that is a vertical line. So the axis of symmetry is an equation of a vertical line. And this form of a quadratic function is very easy to identify all these pieces. So you might be asked to determine whether it opens up, opens down. Um, what's the vertex? What's the minimum? What's the maximum? Um, what's the axis of symmetry? Graph it. All that kind of stuff. So here, let me do a quick example. Negative 2, x minus 3 squared plus 4. <clears throat> First and foremost, my leading coefficient, this is my a, a is less than zero because it's negative. That means that my parabola is going to open down, which means that my vertex, whatever it might be, is a maximum. It's a high point on the graph. Now let's identify the vertex. Let's start there. So what is my vertex? Now to find my vertex when your quadratic function is in this form, you take the opposite of this. So in this case, that's a negative three or minus three. Take positive three as my x coordinate. Follow the sign of this y coordinate, three, four. So this is just the same thing as a horizontal transformation where you do the opposite. This is a move to the right three, and this is a move up four. So my vertex is the opposite of this and whatever this is. So in this case, the vertex is three, four. Because it is a maximum, um, the maximum of this graph is at the point three, four. Sometimes you'll see us separate it like this, where we say the maximum value is equal to four and it occurs at x is equal to three. So that's saying the same thing as this point, but it's separating it into the y coordinate and the x coordinate, calling the y coordinate the value, and it occurs at the x coordinate. And that's important because when we do our applications, you'll see that's how we separate it to answer different types of questions. Um, my equation of my axis of symmetry for this case is a vertical line x is equal to the x coordinate of my vertex, which is three, these are all the little details of this, and I'm going to use that to go ahead and graph. Now, I might also ask for a y-intercept. And how do I find a y-intercept? You find a y-intercept by replacing your x-coordinate by 0, or replacing x with 0, and then simplifying. Negative 3 squared plus 4. So I have negative 2. This is going to be a positive 9. 
This is a negative 18 plus 4, so this is negative 14. This is a very low y-intercept, 0, negative 14. Probably won't show that on my graph. We'll see. Now let me roughly sketch this. Okay, ah, I'm crooked, that's all right. Rough sketching. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Counting by 1, so that's a 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. Starting with my vertex, 3, 4. So let's start there. 3, 4 is here. This is my vertex. I know it's a maximum. My axis of symmetry is a vertical line that goes through that vertex. Um, it's a maximum. Now, there are a couple things you could do to actually graph this. I don't know how wide it's going to be or how thin it's going to be. So sometimes what you'll see is you can either use the y-intercept and symmetry to graph um, the rest of your graph, or you could pick a point. I'm, I'm going to make... You know what? Let's just do it. Let's use the y-intercept since we already have it. My y-intercept all the way goes all the way down here at negative 14. Okay, so down here is where it crosses the y-axis. So this is going to be very tight, a very thin parabola. So if I connect this, this is my maximum. I'm going to connect it to this point with a nice curve going all the way down. That's the left-hand side of my parabola. Because this is my axis of symmetry, this is a line of symmetry, then I have a point equidistant on the other side. So this point is 1, 2, 3 horizontally away and, um, you know, like 18 down. So 1, 2, 3 over here and all the way down on the other side is going to be another point on this graph equidistant to that. Oh, sketching. Okay. And there's my graph. Okay. So start with your vertex. You could draw your axis of symmetry or not, but then you need a point to the right or to the left of that vertex. And because sometimes I'm going to ask you guys for the y-intercept, you can get used to finding that. You can find the x-intercepts, but they're a little bit more difficult. If you find the y-intercept or any other point here, there's a symmetric one on the other side of this line um, to help you graph your, your quadratic, your parabola, to see how wide or thin it is. Okay, So this is called a vertex form. Um, our book calls it standard form. I don't know why. But this is the vertex form of a quadratic function. Um, and then I'm going to do another form of it in a second.